championship programme tonight, with Ipswich and Peterborough both looking for wins to strengthen their respective survival bids. In fact, Posh could move off the bottom by beating Doncaster. Ipswich do have Damien Delaney available at Watford after his red card from Saturday was overturned. They nicked the result against us up here a few months ago when, the, again, the game should have been dead and buried. But it's a different opposition now in terms of we're away from home. From what I hear, the pitch is not great. Obviously, we've been playing rugby on it. So we have to roll our sleeves up and get ready for the battle because every game in the Championship is a battle. Essex's Alistair Cook has led England to victory in his debut test as captain against Bangladesh. England did make heavy work of it, though. They dismissed the uh, hosts on um, the final day at Chittagong, eventually winning by 181 runs. That to go one up in the two-match series there with that great catch. Now, horse racing fans everywhere will know that today saw the start of this year's Cheltenham Festival, the most prestigious meeting of the National Hunt calendar. But did you know that the origins of steeplechase racing can be traced back to more than 200 years to a school in Suffolk? Well, Martin Stew's been investigating that for us. Champagne, glamour, glitz and the GGs, the Cheltenham Festival is worth big bucks these days. But as the crowd splash the cash in eager anticipation of the big Gold Cup race on Friday, I wonder if they've ever spared a thought to the origins of the steeplechase. Well, if they have, they should come here. It was at Orwell Park Prep School on the outskirts of Ipswich. The first steeplechase was run 207 years ago. And to celebrate the fact, students have been recreating the scene. Let me take you back to 1803. Soldiers from the 7th Hussars were preparing for an invasion by Napoleon Bonaparte. I think that really the origin is a bit of hijinks. The um, army guys were uh, cooped up in their barracks in Ipswich, uh, getting very bored, and one night they thought they'd have a bit of fun. So what they did was to um, have a race uh, at midnight from Ipswich to Nacton, where Orwell Park School is. They dressed up in their nightcaps and their nightshirts and came screaming through the village at midnight. No doubt fortified by something a little stronger than Coco, the 7th Hussars tore across the Suffolk countryside. Over four and a half miles of uneven terrain hurdling anything along their path as they raced to the steeple of St Martin's Church. Unfortunately, the steeple which gave its name to the race is no longer standing. Then they were competing for honour and bragging rights. The purse for Friday's Gold Cup is just under half a million. The original race was four and a half miles, a mile longer than the Gold Cup course, but the school are proud of their heritage nonetheless. There's a bit of history, which is great fun, but it's also fun to see the girls having a great time. And of course, they're very good horsewomen. I mean, they're super, as you saw from their jumping. As favourites Corto Star and Denman fight it out at 3.20 on Friday, they'll no doubt be excited punters and high stakes. But perhaps not the history and the raw excitement of the first steeplechase 207 years ago. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Ipswich. They knew how to live in those days 200 years ago. <laughs> Great racing. I know yeah. nothing about horse racing. That looked pretty cool to Being me. In midnight, though. Interesting. <laughs> now, East Anglia has a strong association with wildlife, particularly birds. Mm. And in Norfolk, a charm of finches is currently causing an internet sensation. Yeah, they're part of an obscure art exhibition where the 40 birds play electric guitars. I kid you not. Check your calendars. No, it's not April Fool's Day. It's just one of those stories where the truth is stranger than fiction. Here's Natalie Gray to tell you more. <laughs> Remember the bands, the birds and the eagles? Well, now it's the finches that are top of the flocks. But these are real birds doing the rocking. Forty tiny zebra finches bred in captivity in Norfolk are part of an obscure art exhibition where they appear alongside eight electric guitars and five upturned cymbals. It means they make music every time they land on the guitar strings, hop about, peck and preen. It's become one of YouTube's most watched clips of the month with nearly 700,000 hits. And on Twitter, they've been tweeting, well, what else, about the new Jimmy Henchicks. People going to the exhibition at the Barbican Centre in London have been waiting up to 90 minutes to see the birds perform. The chirruping music-making installation is the work of French artist Celeste Boussier-Malchneau. 
for me, it was something was very uh, strange that I have to to learn for to make music. Music was something I thought it was it exists naturally and just need to be translated. The birds belong to Animal Actors, a company that supplies creatures great and small to the film industry. They were bred at a secret location in Norfolk. They also keep zebra finches at Morley Averys near Wyndham, and they say the birds would be loving the limelight. Finches are very playful and love the space and flying about. I'm sure they're really quite happy. I thought it sounded like great fun. I'm sure they're all enjoying themselves and have great fun doing it. I wouldn't like to be the one that cleans the guitar strings, though, at the end of the day. Oh, good point, nor would I. There are no plans as yet for the Finches to release a single, but if they did, I guess they'd be known as the Fab 40. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Norfolk. Could you dance to that music? I'm not sure. An acquired that. taste, isn't it? <laughs> Come on then, give me some bird puns. I know you've been waiting to oh, I haven't today. been to that at all, actually. Although I bet they wouldn't play Cool for Cats for you, would they? That would be something, <laughs> wouldn't they? They wouldn't go, go for that, would they? <laughs> Mind you, I suppose uh -huh. if you can get a gorilla that plays a good, whatever the drums, I suppose the birds that actually play the guitar is nothing too difficult, is it? You've not seen that one? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's I know advert, what you mean. I yeah. came with you. <laughs> right, now let's take a quick look at uh, what's in the national news straight after this at the moment. But first, Amanda is here mm. with us to talk about the weather. Everyone's been talking about it today. What a beautiful day. Oh, it's been absolutely gorgeous. In fact, Ross in our office even yeah. came in in a pair of shorts today. I think we've got <laughs> a picture somewhere. I knew that was going to be oh, shaved on the sun stage. Lovely my. Roscoe. Oh, I'm not sure it was quite If I got my knees out, that wouldn't have had that. That wouldn't have been up there, would it? <laughs> my chubby little knees wouldn't have been up there, would they, Amanda? Oh, I'm sure you look lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is set, sorry. Yeah. well, it is set to get milder over the next few days, but you probably guessed it, it is turning unsettled again by the end of the week. And this is what's happening. Now, there is a warm front which is moving over us tonight. That will drag in even milder air for tomorrow. And if it gets warmer on Thursday, that could turn out to be the warmest day of the year so far. However, weight in the wings is a cold front which will bring cooler temperatures but also some unsettled wet conditions into the region. So I think that's when our Ross will need to put his longer trousers back on. <laughs> right, let's get the weather. And as we speak, Ross, you saw it a little bit earlier there, is trying to escape the building as best he can, but he's manhandled, <laughs> or legs. woman handled, should I say. We're back tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye. Bye.